Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the Huddersfield Town Career Mode. This is the fourth episode of the series and today we are diving straight into the episode. But to recap the last episode real briefly, uh, of course you guys would have seen our 2-2 draw against Newcastle uh, where Charlie Adam got two assists from corners and Mounier bagged a brace as well as we rescued a point in stoppage time. Crazy game at one, very, very action-packed. And then of course, our very disappointing, humbling defeat to Northampton Town in the Carabao cup we weren't really too fussed about that we lost on penalties we should have won it i missed a penalty in extra time in stoppage time but we're at the carabao cup and it might prove to be a blessing in disguise because now we can focus uh, focus all of our time on the premier league until january when the fa cup comes round so in today's episode guys we have our third game of the premier league and our second game at home against southampton hoping for our first premier league win so far in the series and also we'll be looking to make a new signing as well before deadline day slam shut you'll see transfer deadline day today thanks to your suggestions in the comment section down below in the last episode so diving straight into it Southampton first and only game today let's get to it so of course after our very disappointing defeat to Northampton we are going straight back to our first 11 for this game none of the backup brigade keeping their plays in the first 11 because they were all terrible so this is our team then uh, 43 one of course Lawson in goal uh, it's uh, Louvre or Le I can't seem to pronounce it right you guys have been trying to correct me in the comments but I think I think it's Louvre uh, left back to B. Uh, centre back uh, alongside Jorgensen and Tommy Smith the captain at right back in the middle uh, Philip Billing and Charlie Adam who was sensational against Newcastle with Tomitz on the left and Kachunga on the right Aaron Moyes our attacking mid and Mounier who bagged a brace against the Magpies and rescued us in stoppage time is up top on the bench Green Schindler um, the right back whose name we can't pronounce and I'm not going to learn it I'm not going to try and learn that pronunciation because he missed a penalty uh, in the shootout that sent us out uh, Hog Palmer Van Lepara and the point as well. So first game, it's the only game today, it's Southampton. It is our only and last game, sorry, only, our, it's our last game of August before deadline day. Let's get the win and our first three points of the Premier League season. Come on Huddersfield Town. Also, you would have seen the Kirkley Stadium in the last episode as well. Um, some of you guys were letting me know that I can show the Premier League lineup animations if I speed it up. Now, I'm not too sure whether you guys are right or not. I'd, I'd prefer not to risk it for the time being, but I might have a go at some point um, and, and, and see if that works. Maybe like in a private video, just to see but at least I can show you the Kirkley Stadium my video didn't get blocked in the last episode and the Kirkley Stadium looks fantastic so I'll continue to show this stadium and the others as well it looks glorious man absolutely beautiful job from EA stadium looks fantastic so this is Southampton's lineup for the game then uh, set up similar to us in a 4-2-3-1 Stephen Davis the captain of Romeo in the holding midfield areas Virgil van Dijk is still there then they haven't sold him in the game just like in real life Cedric at right back he's a real threat when going forward have to watch that and Duzan Tadic in the attacking midfield role with Redmond on the left and Gelson Martins on the right with Gabbiadini up top very good team that Southampton's very very good team indeed it's going to be a hard one to stop and a hard one to break down I feel so this could be a really tough game for us of course in real life the game finished nil nil we're yet to get a clean sheet in the premier league so far what a start yet to get a clean sheet in the premier league so far or a win so i want both of those today let's see if we can get it had it on the ball for the saints finding oriol romeo i'm such a big fan of romeo really really am as uh, Redmond finds Sam McQueen down left into Stephen Davis. And now Tadic back towards the captain for Southampton today. Lovely ball by Cedric there. Releasing Martins. Does he want to cross the boys middle? Yes, he does. Got to watch that there. And Redmond heads it in. And it's the worst possible start for Huddersfield. And that's twice now in three games. Our captain has lost an aerial duel. Sacco, I could understand. But Redmond? Come on, Smith. Got to be stronger, mate. And that was not Pellegrino, I'm sure. I'm sure that wasn't Pellegrino showed there. Celebrating with the Southampton player. I mean, Tommy Smith, man, I, I decided not to sell him. We could have done in the very first episode, but that's twice now. His positioning's been poor. He's let someone, uh, someone get goal side, and he's not been able to get the ball away. Redmond heads it in. Already a second goal in the Premier League, and we trail very early on. So the chance of getting a clean sheet's already gone. Not a great start at all. Good tackle there now. Mounier back heels towards Moy, who could be inside the area. He's round Van Dyke. Oh, what a save by Alex McCarthy. In strides, gets the ball first and can't. Redmond clears it. Big stop by the goalkeeper. Great chance, but still 1 0 to the Saints. We're not taking our chances, man, and that's a real problem for us. Because if we're not scoring goals, we're not going to be winning games. Clearly, Moy through to Mounier finds him. I'll try and give it back to the Aussie down the right hand side. Sam McQueen comes across. Moy says, See you later, Sammy boy. Gets inside. Great chance here, and he's someone to be a supporting runner. 
Chris Kachunga, another fine save by McCarthy, and out for a corner. Two big stops by Alex there. Still 1-0. We know how good Charlie Adam is from corners. It goes to the centre, and this one's punched away. Typical. Jinxed it straight away, but it'll come back towards Adam. Can he get another chance here down the left-hand side? We know he's good at crosses. In it goes. Not a bad Louis, this one. And the header by Ince is caught by McCarthy. Still 1-0, but a good spell of pressure here. This is more like it. Bad start to the game, but now we're picking it up. We scored in every single Premier League game so far, and I want that run to continue, but here come the Saints down the right-hand side. Martins rolls it through the uh, left-back's legs, but Tuanzebi is there. And I've got to say, despite our defending being quite poor to start this season off, Tuanzebi is looking very good indeed. And now a chance here with Moy finding Mounier, and Kachunga might be in behind McQueen. He is. A great chance here. It's Kachunga. It's Kachunga. It's Kachunga. McCarthy again with another brilliant save. Couple of corners, one in quick succession here. Charlie Adams takes one once more in towards Mounier, and it's flicked on, and it's the combination again. Mounier getting on the end of a Charlie Adam corner. I mean, these two guys this season are surely going to be contenders for player of the season, and we're only three games in. Adams' deliveries from corners are just something out of this world. Another brilliant corner into the middle, and Mounier once more beats two men in the air, and he heads it into the back of the net for his third goal in two games. This this guy's looking like a real handful, and I'm loving those two already. 1-1, one, one, and the spell of pressure eventually pays off. Oh, Charlie Adam, your ball, son, well done. Spreads it down left-hand side towards our left-back. Men in the middle. I want to aim for Mounier if I can. And it'll go to the back stick instead. Well, Kachunga's getting in and heads it in. It's another goal from a header. And this time it's Kachunga. Brilliant ball from our left-back. And we've turned this game on its head in the space of five minutes. What a cross. And a great header by Kachunga at the back post. 2-1 Huddersfield. And we've gone in front. Well, there it is then. Half-time at the Kirkley Stadium. Well, what an action-packed first 45 minutes. The Saints starting off with an early goal just six minutes in. But two quick goals in the space of five minutes. Turns the game on its head. Puts us in front. What a response from Huddersfield. More of the same in the second half. Come on. Adam wins the header and finds Tom Ince. Takes it round one. Can he get round another? Oh, Tom Ince. Tom Ince. Tom Ince. Oh, what a goal. What a goal from Tom Ince. And Huddersfield take a two-goal lead. Go 3-1 up. We are just on fire in this game. We wanted our first Premier League win. And as things stand, we're going to get it. What a goal from Tom Ince. Heel to heel flick. Takes it round one. Then a roulette round another. And then smashes the ball in with the left foot. That's an absolutely superb goal from the son of Paul Ince and his dad would have been proud of that one. An amazing goal. 3-1 to the Terriers. We've, we've just been sensational in this game. No wonder I'm happy. I'm delighted with his performance. Good to us. Now left back will find Tom Ince down left hand side. I'll try and get past Cedric if I can and find some space here. Loses the ball but does win it back. Lovely scoop turn. Whips one in towards the Great Dane. Oh, what a header in off the post. And I said I wasn't going to be a crossing team with this side. Well, I think I have to now Three of our four goals coming from crosses and the Great Dane with his first of the season. Well, he wanted to make a statement in this game and we certainly have. What a header from Philip Billing in off the post. 4-1 Huddersfield. We've been sensational. Well, that is going to do it then. Final whistle here at the Kirkley Stadium. I wanted our first win in the Premier League of Huddersfield and we have got it. And what a performance. 4-1 the final score. A fantastic performance. Really, really great win. Three of our four headers coming from... Uh, sorry, three of our four Four goals going from headers and crosses. But we don't mind how we get the points as long as we do. We were just sensational. Once again, our passing not the best in this game. But to be honest, I don't mind too much. 10 shots, 6 on target, 52% possession and a 4 goal to 1 scoreline. Without question, thoroughly deserved these 3 points. We, we righted all the wrongs we had in our first 3 games. And we were just... Brilliant here. Absolutely brilliant. And once again, this man, fantastic. Charlie Adam with two assists. No one's questioning the signing now. Back-to-back -back games with two plus assists. He was great. And I think I'll give him man the match as well. But I thought Tom Ince too was excellent with a goal and assist. I think they'll share man the match. Adam and Ince, who I thought both were probably our best players in this game. So our first three points, glad to get them. Uh, and what a way to get them as well. We were just brilliant. All right, so simulating through the calendar and we have now got to deadline day 10 hours remaining on transfer deadline day and a new transfer system as well I'm interested to see how this is going to work now of course in the last episode I asked you guys for signing suggestions and there were just so many comments in the last episode thank you so much for all of those comments and there's quite a few players on the short list we won't be putting in bids for all of them as Lopez there was one player I wanted he's gone to a Bilbao but we will go for quite a few so let's get to it
Now, of course, I did say I wanted a winger. Low suggestions for wingers, but also quite a few strikers and centre forwards that were recommended as well, uh, including Peter Crouch from someone. I I'm not sure who it was. I can't remember the name of someone that wanted Peter Crouch, but I saw quite a few comments on Peter Crouch. I'm not sure we're going to go in for him, but uh, there were quite a lot of comments. Scott Sinclair, I thought, was quite an interesting comment. Someone saying, try and resurrect his career, bring him back to the Premier League, see how he could do. Uh, Charlie Musonda was one I was very, very keen on. Of course, this guy's got five-star skills and a five-star weak foot as well. Uh, Jack Harrison, uh, was recommended to from Bryn, I think it was. Uh, so lots and lots of names. I think we'll start off with Bergwin, who I saw. Uh, but it does say the team will not sell his players. He's too important for the club. Moses Simon as well uh, was someone else I like the look of. We can't put a bid in for him either, which is a shame. Uh, Rafinha, uh, I saw a comment for him. 76 rated uh, left midfielder. Valued at £10 million. Looks like I'll have to spend a little bit over the odds for that. Etebo, uh, Andre Green, Sisto, who I must say I like the look of, uh, and also Masonda as well. I think we're going to put a bit of a Sisto first. He's got a release clause of £17.2 million, which we could just about afford. So let's go in for the Dane to begin with and see if we can get Celta to let him go for a little bit less than that release clause. All right, so let's go ahead and put in a bid over the 7.5 million pounds to begin with then. Let's go straight to 10 million pounds because I'm totally fine paying that and we'll see what they say. 10 million pounds and oh, Celta Vigo said yes yeah, straight off the bat. So I probably should have offered a little bit lower. I thought they were going to ask for quite a bit more than that but just 10 million pounds for Sisto. Now I'll be totally fine paying that. Let's put a few more bids in first though before we go for contract negotiations. Let's go for Rafinha next. Uh, I saw he's got some very nice attributes here. Very quick and dribbling's already 82 at just 76 overall. So we'll put a bid in for him next and see what the club asks for. I haven't done a player swap yet. So I might do that first. And uh, there's quite a few wingers here at Huddersfield. I'm not sure I'm ever going to use Joe Lolly, to be honest. 65 overall, 600 grand. I'm not entirely sure the club would want him, but uh, I might put in that bid alongside... Oh, oh I, I didn't realise it was just a, a straight swap. I was going to put some swap in, a swap in and, and some money as well. But uh, I'm not sure they're just going to want Joe Lolly at all. So, um, yeah. <laughs> all right, just going to offer a transfer fee instead. Um, let's just put in a straight valuation with a £10 million and see what they say. We won't let Rafinha go for that. We'll sell him £16.8 million. And they want to sell on clause of 5%. Uh, I think we'll quickly counter that. We will remove the sell on clause. We will propose a new transfer fee of, let's go to £12.5 million. Because, I mean, Sisto for £10 million, I think I'll probably take that on its own. So we'll see what they say. We won't let Rafinha go for that. We'll send him £16.3 million. Nah, uh, they're, they're, they're asking for the £16.3 million. But they're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. So one final bid from me. That's going to be £13 million. We will put in that sell-on clause uh, once again. And uh, we'll up that to 10% actually. And uh, we'll see what they say. 13 million plus 10%. They'll consider it and they'll get back to us. Okay, so we'll go for Charlie Musonda next. And he's someone I really want. Because again, he's got that five-star skills and weak foot as well. And we've not got a full scout report on the guy yet. But you can see his range of attributes in some of the key stats there. Flare, uh, flare trait as well. Um, I, I, oh God, he's so bad. Like, look at this guy. And I don't think I've ever used him before. So I'd love to get him. Let's see if we can. There he is, Antonio, 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 Antonio. Right, okay, so, uh, sorry about that. Uh, 10.5 million pounds did uh, straight away, I think. Go straight with evaluation, and uh, let's see what Chelsea say to that one. And Conte says, yes, oh, get in, 10.5 million pound bid, accepted straight off the bat. I'm going to be singing his name a lot more now. Conte, totally fine with that. Love that bid. And now we can choose between uh, Sisto or Musonda. And I'm not sure which one I prefer from those two. All right, so our final bid is going to be for Scott Sinclair. Very interesting suggestion, but a very good one. Nice recommendation, that. And uh, we'll see if we can get him from Brendan Rodgers' side. We'll put in a straight valuation bid of £8 million, and we shall wait and see what he says. And they want £11.5 million for Scott Sinclair, plus a 5% transfer fee. Uh, sorry, a 5% uh, sell-on fee. Which um, I, I don't really see. I, I, I don't really see the point. So if we can get Misonda and Sisto for less than that, uh, I, I'm not sure. You know who would be considered a better player, but they're both younger and would surely have more potential. We will remove that sell-on clause. We'll propose a new transfer fee. We'll go to 10 million pounds and we'll think about it. But if they say no, we'll say no as well. And they're saying no. They want 12 million pounds for Sinclair, but I'm um, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to forget it. We're going to end negotiations here because if we can get Sisto or Musonda for less, we may as well go for the younger player. Okay, so two clubs have accepted bids. Uh, those are Celta Vigo and Chelsea for Sisto and Musonda, respectively. So, uh, going to go straight into the contract negotiations now with both. 
Uh, I think we will start off with, let's start off with Musonda, because he's the one I would really like. 10.5 million pound bid. And let's see if we can get a decent contract negotiated with Charlie. Okay, so first thing he's asked for is a crucial squad status, which, I mean, I think he'd probably get. You know, obviously Tommy had scored in the last game, he's good. Kachunga very good as well, but I'm sure one of those could drop to the bench and be an impact sub, and this guy could start most of our games for us. I'm, I'm okay offering that. And if that means that he won't ask for as much money, I, I think I'll take that. Now, he wants a four-year contract. I want a five-year deal. Do I want to tie this guy down for as long as I can? So let's go for a five-year deal. And the agent is going to say he's happy with the length of, his, uh, length of the contract we offered. So that's good. And a disregard a release clause. We're definitely not offering one of those. But the agent wants £29.7 million. Pounds. And he says, is that all right with you? It definitely isn't. So you're going to deny that release clause and hope... His agent's okay with that, and he says it is. So no release clause from Usonda, that's fantastic. Now let's talk about his salary, and we're going to offer one straight off the bat. Now, the issue here is we don't know what Charlie Musonda's on, because we didn't have a full scout report on the guy. So I don't know what to offer, because he might offer something which is lower than he's on right now, and he'll probably want a wage increase. So... This is going to be a very interesting offer. This guy is a very good young talent, so I expect he's on quite a bit at Chelsea, even though he's not a key member of the first team squad. So I, I think we're going to offer straight away 40 grand a week, which, I mean, it might be a lot higher than he's on right now. I genuinely don't know. But I'll be totally fine paying 40 grand for five years for someone who's Musonda's quality and potential and skill moves as well. Uh, and the sign-on bonus will go to, let's go to 200 grand. Uh, we shall wait and see what he says to that. The wages you are offering, Musonda, are insulting. Oh, God. Oh, God. He says no. The agent's leaving. And uh, I've slumped back in my chair. And uh, understandably so. Charlie Musonda wants the money. And he's not going to get it here. So the agent has pulled out. Sisto, I think you're coming in. I have no idea what Musonda's on. So I thought I'd just gamble. And 40 grand a week. Come on, mate. Seriously, that's not even that bad. But uh, clearly, he was insulted by uh, the, the low amount of un uh, money we offered him. So uh, instead, we're going to go in for Sisto. And uh, hopefully, he, uh, his mind won't be on money, but on performances for Huddersfield Town. Can't believe they just walked out like that, man. Seriously. Could have at least negotiated with me. I mean, seriously. Uh, okay, so uh, here we go then. Uh, he wants an important role in our first team, which is obviously totally fine. So we'll accept that straight away. We want to give him a five-year deal. And let's see what the agent says. Yep, that's what they're after. So that's fantastic. He doesn't want a release clause in their contract. Now, this is my sort of agent. Charlie Musonda's agent can get lost, but this agent talks sense. So that's totally fine. No release clause for Sisto as well. And uh, how much money does he want? Well, we're going to offer that. He's currently on 19 grand a week. Uh, so we're not going to go to 40 grand. We let on Musonda. We're going to go to 20 grand a week and a sign-on bonus of... Let's go with a low sign-on bonus, 100 grand. And we shall wait and see what they say to that. Sorry, but the offer is too low. 16,500 per week is as low as he'll sign for. And a sign-on bonus of 230 grand and 270 grand after 15 appearances. So he wants less on the wages than we offered, which is, uh, which is fine. Um, but he wants two big bonuses there. And that is a combined total of 500 grand, which is a lot of money uh, to pay for Sisto, just 74 rated. Um, oh God, I don't really want to pay that much money. So we'll try and edit that and get his sign-on bonus down to 200 grand if we can. And let's see if we can try and adjust the bonus after 15 games. We'll give it to him quicker after 10 games. We'll try and get that down to 250 grand. That's not a lot of money going out of the, uh, the paycheck he would get. We'll offer that. That's still 450 grand. So only 50 grand less. Uh, and we shall hopefully see him accept that deal and not walk out like Musonda did. Let's find out. There we go. A fair offer. He's okay with that. And that means that Sisto is going to come in instead. So Sisto is going to arrive, not Musonda. And um, yeah, I think that'll still be a good signing. He's not the one I wanted, but he still looks very good indeed. So Sisto, welcome to the club. He comes in on deadline day. So Pio and Sisto is in there, and I've got to say, it might be a blessing in disguise that Musonda's agent pulled out negotiations for his client, because look at this guy, four-star skills, four-star weak foot, some really nice stats, can play on either side of the wings, 22 years old, we said we wanted physically good players, look at these physical stats here, 82 acceleration, 85 sprint speed, 83 agility, 81 balance, 79 jumping, our team's very good in the air, so Sisto could be as well, 79 stamina, which I love as well, very, very decent on a winger that's just 22 years old, and some 
some very good technicals as well. This guy looks good. Flare trait, long shot taker trait as well. Technical dribbler trait. I mean, i got to say, I think actually we end up choosing someone who probably suits us a little bit better. I would love Musonda, but I really like those stats. Whether he goes in the first team or not, I'm not too sure. He could play him on the right-hand side and try and let him cut inside. But of course, Tom Ince, lest we forget, is on the left-hand side. He started off well this season, scoring already in the last game. And we could possibly have Ince on the right and Sisto on the left with those two being inside forwards in this team. And I think that might benefit us quite well. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Should we keep things as they are? So have Ince on the left, Kachunga on the right, and Sisto coming off the bench as an impact sub. Or have Sisto on the left, Ince on the right, and Kachunga off the bench. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Should Sisto go straight in the first 11 or be an impact sub to begin with? What do you guys think? All right, so there's three hours left on deadline day, and unfortunately... We're not getting any bids for these players on the transfer list. Got quite a few players on there right now, but not a single bid is coming for any of them, which means they'll all be staying here. It's really annoying as well, because I've got no plans to use these guys this season at all. Um, so I prefer the money for them, really. But uh, one of those things, three hours left on deadline day. We still have a little bit of money left in our budget, as you can see, £6.5 million. Pounds. We want to buy a youth scout, and uh, I'd rather keep some money for January as well. So I think that is going to be that then. Deadline day is going to end. We got our man in the end, that was Sisto, and there is actually an email here, and that is going to be a loan off for billing. Burrow, what's the point? What's the point? Did you not see the last game? He scored a wonderful header. He's going nowhere. I'm going to block offers. I'm going to block offers. Billing is going nowhere. Like, if you want Dean Whitehead, you can have him. But not the Great Dane, all right? The Great Dane stays here. So, in the end, that is transfer deadline day over then. Just the one sign-in. We get the winger we were after. This will happen around the leagues, as you can see what clubs did what uh, in the transfer window. And, of course, uh, with us, uh, what we did as well, £21.8 million spent on four new players. Tuanzabi, Charlie Adam, Sessignon, and Sisto as well. And I've got to say as well, that's a really good transfer window that is a really really good transfer window not much money spent still some money left over as well and we've got four quality players three good youngsters and a really good senior pro that started off as well so rate our transfer window out of 10 in the comment section down below today guys i i call it an 8 out of 10 i call that an 8 out of 10 it's you know it's, it's not it's not a weldy it's not a weldy but it's certainly a very successful one and a good one so that's an 8 out of 10 transfer window from me we signed some really good players in there and not spent all of our money as well so i'm totally fine with that and there's a bid straight after deadline day for jonathan hogg as well hmm so that is going to do it then for transfer deadline day you can see sisto holding the shirt and that is going to end today's episode as well we get our man on transfer deadline day then for 10 million pounds a really smart signing in my opinion and i'm looking forward to seeing him in action as well so that will end today's episode of the huddersfield town career guys who are a big fan of you for watching i really hope you have enjoyed it. if you did enjoy the episode then please do consider leaving a like have a fantastic weekend guys much love to you all and if you want to see another episode of the huddersfield town career mode later on tonight after the final premier league game then get this video to 2000 likes and i'll upload another one at around 7 30 p.m uk time so there is your challenge for a double episode upload day get this video to 2000 likes and the next episode will be out later on tonight thanks for watching have an awesome weekend and i'll see you for the next episode hopefully later on tonight bye